Imagine a free high-speed PEM solver for both CPU and GPU, built for real engineering problems. But do element types really give the same results? Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm thrilled to introduce a finite element solver that I have built entirely from Scratch on C++ and CUDA languages. This solver is designed for to fully leverage both CPU and GPU architectures within the same code, allowing for seamless integration and optimization at compilation time. In this video, I will dive into the solver capabilities by creating two different meshes in the LSDyne format using the free software LS Reposed. Then we will run the simulation using a simple script based on the OpenRadius framework. Let's jump in and see it in action. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will show you how to generate two different or three different meshes, cylinder meshes to compare with uh, some other videos in which we, we had a, an Abacus finite element model or a SPH model. So I will teach you how to generate this mesh on LS Preposed. So in this case we can begin here with shape measure and we can choose here the cylinder solid, our, our shape. So the first thing we want to do is to put some radius length, element count and direction. So we want to do some cylinder like, like in the previous videos with a, a certain length of about, this is a big, big, big cylinder of aluminium. So this you have to to account for this this value because this will define how the cylinder is created. So if you put some non non friendly values to say on on, on that way, we can obtain some not all exam meshes. So not all exam meshes exam elements. Uh, in the mesh. So, in this case, I think we can select here the direction I want it in the C direction. So, create, and this is the top view of the cylinder. And if we click accept here, we have our all exa mesh. If you do, do not put some friendly values here, we can obtain some non exa elements. So I save the keyword because I will only use the mesh in our solver. So we can click here and put cylinder tetra exa. I'm sorry. The next mesh we want to do is some tetra mesh. In this case, we have to uh, begin with a shape and then to mesh it, right? 0 0.5 and we will begin from C equals 0 this is our end position and the full full turn so we have our cylinder here and then click again in elemental mesh but in this case we will go to tetra measure and the first thing we do is to pick skin geometry and click on the three different surfaces which comprises the, the cylinder. And here we can define some uh, element length or element size. For example, five centimeters is a, is a bit coarse the mesh, but we can just this to compare with the two different meshes. Once we click on Tria Mesh and we can see the mesh, we will click on Tet Mesh to perform the Tetra. Until we click this button, up until that, we will not have our solid mesh. Once we click on Accept, we have here our part. Okay? If we hide the geometry, we can see the mesh. And we can save it now with save as, keyword as, and cylinder theta, right? If we can, if, if we want to mesh some denser element size, 
we can click again here and again with tetra measure and pick skin geometry like before all the three parts and we can for example mesh it with two centimeters element length and then create our tetra mesh again I'm sorry I think I did not create it so again I forgot to click on accept tree mesh tet mesh and then accept done and here we have our mesh file save us save keyword as and we will call this keyword file from our JSON input file which is, re is read from the solver right tetra dance so we will run now our simulation in order to run it we go here inside Wellform scripts I've just copied uh, or created a script based on Open Radio's script. The thing is with this script, this Python script, you run the JSON, the, the, the Wellform binary, which reads this, for example, JSON file. What is a JSON file? It's a, an input file, it's a format, a commonly widespread format, which is very straightforward. This is also used by our SPH version of the solver and we have very several sections. This is configuration section in which, in which you define the time step. This is the material section, domain blocks in which you read this file, which is the one we have, been, we have created already. And these are the zones of the domain in which you fix the bottom one and move the upper one. Okay, based on a box created about the coordinates of the piece. So here we choose compression exa, open and add a job. And we can see here the solver running. This is all the previous section in which we read the our our mesh. We have been used the K file only for the mesh. As we have seen here this is only for the mesh we can read also the k file to perform the running and we can see here the the results then if we go to our para view this is already our model i show you from from zero how we can read this file and here we are the steps running this is our last step the number two and if we perform a cut we can follow our mesh here selecting surface with edges and here we can change our coordinates to 45 degree plane and if we apply here we can see our mesh with our stresses we can also see our pressure and our plane strain and we also can change our scale i think it will it would be useful uh, to create some results reading video later okay now finally we will run our tetra example so we will run it by going to work from fam scripts and we can delete our outputs and we can select run.bat and we will finally choose our compression tetra example click on add job and to accept and here we can see all the outputs being generated in this directory if you want to see the results we will go to paraview and open and here we will choose the latest file for example this and we can see here a cut of the results so these are the stresses 
in the cylinder. Remember, it's a cylinder subjected to compression. But the important thing here is if we look at the pressure, this is a coarser mesh intentionally. We can see that there are some oscillation on the pressures and plastic strain is not oscillating. So this oscillating behavior is a result for the coarser mesh and also for being averaged the pressure on the nodes in order to overcome a phenomenon called blocking or locking, which is an, an interesting phenomena occurring in the finite element method, which I will describe in future videos if you like. So I hope you, you like this video. If you like it, please click on subscribe and